Good evening and welcome to Conversations. I'm Professor Reggie Miles, and we've got a great one for you today. Today is where the old school meets the new school, or I can say where the true school meets the youthful school. It's all happening, all that and so much more right here on the place that you're to be for the best in information, edutainment, and all that good stuff. You get it right here on Conversations. Well, we're back, and my guest for this evening is Mr. Ricky Weatherspoon Jr., and you know him as Tariq. How are you, sir? Hey, Mr. Reggie Miles, what's happening, man? Well, we made it. (laughs) We made it, and we've got this thing going, and we've got a lot of stuff to do this evening. We've got to talk about this history, the culture. We've got to talk about your journey. We've got to talk about how you feel about the future and so many more things. And I'm just honored that you allowed me this opportunity to share your story with the world right here on Conversations. Yes, sir. Okay, so as with every question, every time I start, I always ask, my guest, what were you doing before the world's largest step in contest? Well, wow, what was I doing? Depending on the year, if we're talking 1980s, I was still in high school, coming out of high school, going into the United States Navy, Desert Storm veteran, getting out of the Navy. Uh, I went into my job in my field of working on uh, Metro and Amtrak trains as a mechanic. Unfortunately, I hurt my back and had to pick up driving as my job of choice. So uh, that's what I've been doing for the past 20, 25 years. How did you get involved in the social partner dance that's known today as Stepping? Man. My mom and dad did it. My uncle and aunties did it. My entire family is somewhat uh, musically inclined, if you will. I played drums. My grandma, she did percussions. Uh, My mom sang and tap dance at Betsy Ross Grammar School on the south side of Chicago. My dad, he bought all types of albums in the 60s and the 70s. So then when I was born in 1970, you know, uh, I remember coming home when I could remember having albums sprawled all over the living room floor. And uh, that was my playpen, to be quite honest. I would go into albums and open the albums up, open the jacket up and look at the words and the beautiful pictures. And, you know, my dad had a nice component set and reel to reel and I had my headphones and I would don the headphones and just listen to music. I wasn't really into cartoons uh, back then. I was more into music, believe it or not. Wow. Wow. So you went from cartoons to the dance floor? (laughs) So my mom danced with me a lot. Again, she 
she did uh tap dance and i know my my granddad paid her to dance for his friends because she learned all the dances off american bandstand Mm. She did all the dances off American Bandstand in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And uh, she took that into the sock hops and learning later how to bop as a teenager at Dunbar High School. And, and uh, from there, you know, she went to all the clubs like Times Square, Guys and Dolls, and, you know, a host of Dashiki, she told me, and a host of others. She knew Tyrone Wallace, VA, Cynthia Shanks. We knew the Shanks family, you know. So, yeah, man, I, I got it honestly. Wow. Wow. So your first experience, and that's like the same thing with me. I got my first experience uh, with my mother as well, uh, teaching me some of the dance. So we can say that your fundamental foundation was given to you by family? That, as well as my grandma, who is 96 years old, uh, she has been a devout sanctified Pentecostal Christian since the day I was born. <laughs> so when I would visit her, I would have to go to church uh, whenever I spent the night. So I remember on a Saturday night, instead of being able to watch the television shows that I would like to watch, I had to watch The Rock of Ages with Isabel Joseph Johnson. Mm. And what a fellowship at 10 o'clock with Clay Evans, you know, uh, at night. And so that And those groups that were on the shows or a part of the choir gave me a gospel rhythm Mm. that I had at a very young age. So between Mm. my mom dancing with me with R&B and my grandma with the shouting and speaking in tongues and all the things that go on in the gospel church, Mm. uh, I had both worlds pressed upon me. Wow. Yes. Wow. The church and then just being you. So what made you just fall in love? When did you see social partner dancing for yourself? And what made you decide? What inspired you to say, uh, well, yeah, this is what I want to do? Uh, seeing my mom do it at a young age with my dad. Mm-hmm. Or seeing uh, my uncle Sylvester Baker of the Rock Pack, you know, kind of play around a little bit when they had the rent parties and, uh, you know, the social gatherings, uh, picnics and what have you. Uh, I always knew that I wanted to do it, but I thought that it was an old person's dance or an Mm. older person's dance. Mm. So straight in when I was in high school, I became a house head, house music head in 1983. But I also roller skated. My mom bought me my first pair of skates at the age of five. They were red, white, and blue. And so she used to take me to to, uh, the rink when it was on 89th and Ashland and Roll Arena on 103rd and the Loop on 95th. Uh, So, you know, again, it's music has been a part of my life since, you know, I was a little boy, real young. So it's the music. It's definitely the music. That's my foundation. Okay, that's that's integral in doing this. And we're going to talk about, you know, the intricacies of the social partner dance. We're definitely going to do this. My guest is Tar Rick, and so glad that all of you are joining in on this second conversations. Uh, this has been the second one that I've done in the last six months. And again, Rick, I'm so glad to have you. And man, I'm glad we- for the invite, sir. We got so much, we got so much in common, Uh, both being, you know, having our first experience with family and then mother and then going to the church. Now, you know, I was a drummer too, Rick. Okay. I I played the drums myself. So I'm figuring out, I'm trying to figure out, I said, wow, I'm saying, asking myself, why do I really like this dude's style? So now you're laying it out and I'm figuring that we've been, you know, I'm seeing that we've been walking like, a similar trail, not the same trail, but right. a similar trail. And, yeah. and I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And then I would be remiss if I didn't tell, if I didn't tell uh, our listening audience right now, if I didn't tell the people that one of the reasons why uh, this is uh, old school meets new school is because your dance, my brother, your dance. 
<laughs> your dance, and we're gonna look at it. I, I, I don't, I can't. I gotta stand up just for a minute. To just okay. You know when when a brother does this, huh? You know when a brother does this, put their hand over their heart and they sit and, really? and then they stretch it out. I, and yeah. then you see this right here. Uh, as Marvin Gaye once said, I got to give it up. Uh. I think that I think your dance is one of the most incredible dances that I've ever seen. And and for me and for me to stop and say, oh, my God, I, I'm I'm in awe and I admire this dude. I'm just like. I thought I thought you was a kind of you know older. I didn't. I was I was surprised to find out that you're just a young man. You still yes, a young sir. man. I say yes. whoa, and that blew my mind because I've seen some of the things that that you've contributed, some of the stories that you've told uh, on social media, your comments on social media, and I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to say this. This man, this man sounds like he's one of us, but he's really a new schooler. When did you start learning the dance? Uh, so, when okay, so I'll answer that. Um, I got uh, serious about it in 98, but I had been around it since 95. Uh, so when I got serious about it, um, let me let me take a step back. Actually, 97 is when I approached Claudel Jackson mm. at the other place at 75th and King Drive. Wow. I never forget it. It was like, like yesterday, where it was he, DJ Cisco at the time, and Keith Hubbard were inside on a Monday night. They were inside, it was about 8 8 30 p.m. And I want to say it was a winter's night. And I just cornered him. I asked him, I said, look here, man, uh, you know, I've been admiring your style. I saw you in the contest and what have you. And I, I would like to see if I can get this dance. Can you help me out? He said, my young brother, there's nothing that I can do for you right now, considering I have a teenage son that I'm instrumental in his development. And so I have to put the time and effort into making sure that he's off the streets and into them books and, you know, whatever. But I took it. You know, on the chin, it's like, okay, I respected it. And I set out a year because my schedule when I was working for Airborne Express was 1.30 to 10 p.m. And so because of that, I couldn't really find my niche during the week. And so I had to take a weekend class at Olive Harvey College on a Saturday. And as luck would have it, I met Daryl Davis and Miss Holly, may she rest in peace, for the first time in the fall of 1998. Wow. And they had six weeks of beginners, six weeks of intermediate, and six weeks of advanced. And I took all three classes. Mm. Mm. Yes. You know, the, the, the dancing bull, that's a bad man. Ain't it? That's a bad man. I used hey. to, uh, I went spinning in the city. I was spinning uh, at the end of the rainbow on 79th and the lakefront. Yes. And uh, Daryl and them would be, they would be bar hopping. And then they would come over there to my, they would come over to my set and Daryl would be tearing up the floor. I used to get mad. I was mad. Because he, I, I would just want to dance next to this dude. <laughs> you know, he got that magnetic man. man. I just Something wanted about to his dance, dance, man. And I just wanted to dance next to this dude. And we messed around and started uh, getting in the place where the lo owner literally had to put us out because wow. folks, we we just kept dancing. But that's the story I tell about Daryl all the time. You know, you got a lot of people chiming in. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Jacqueline says hello, and uh, from hey, Cincinnati. Uh, Keila is saying hello, and then Miss Vicky Henning. Hey, Miss Vicky. And uh, uh, Simon Wilkes. <laughs> My brother Simon. Yeah, and uh, and then Miss uh, Tina. Uh, Renee Moore saying, "My boy Rick." One of my favorite dancers. And then, oh, now this girl right here. One of my first dancers. 
man, this woman right here. I mean, <laughs> hey, Danielle, I hope you got that invitation that I sent you. Because, boy, I mean, when I came back on the set, you know, I was like, I was like terrified. That you know to ask that woman Danielle to dance. Was but it I, a culture I, shock for you, Reggie? Yeah, man. I yeah. I mean, cause cause I tell all the, I tell all the ladies now that uh I can't step. You know, I always tell them that I can't because step. Why do you Why do you start? Why do you preface your dance with that statement? Because uh, some of the things that I saw with the change that I saw with the change and I, I didn't understand, but I understood. And when I kept hearing that people are talking about counting and you know, I can't, I can't function and do two things at the same time. I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't. Well, Reggie, let me say this before you complete that statement. I'm going to say that with counting for me, it breaks the chemistry and continuity of the dance if mm. you're counting while mm. dancing mm. that's just my opinion well you know and i kind of like i kind of like feel that same way because <laughs> i'm a rhythm i'm a rhythm dancer yes and uh the first thing that i'm trying to establish the first thing that i'm feeling is what i feel in your hands good point and if i can find that one you know I ain't talking about five, six, seven, eight, uh, one. I'm talking about if I can, if we can come to that one, yes. while we listening to the music, I know I can go. There it is with her. And uh, most of the women that have, uh, all of them, uh, most of the women that I've danced with, um, uh, that that's under the new school. Uh, I've learned to kind of like wait, <laughs> <You know? laughs> wait, and then when I see it, then I'll get into it. But basically, I found out that I'm finding out really it's really the same thing. It's just the steps is being manipulated differently by the newer dancers, and so I just have to uh, since I, since it's all in my heart since it's all manifested in me, since I've had it for like 50 years, yes, I'm going to adjust. <laughs> you know, I'm going to adjust. I'm going to adjust. Yes. Just, just to dance. And then I'm satisfied if I, if a woman smiles with me when we dance, then I'm cool. You know, if she don't smile, then uh, then I know I messed up. I won't, I won't ask her to dance Man, again. Man, I don't know about that, Reggie, because I'm going to tell you. When I first danced with Tina, when I first danced with Sharnice, they were stoic in their face. There was no instant gratification whatsoever mm. when it came to dancing, but I felt it in the hands. The yeah, language well, is an unspoken language, man. Well, yeah, you, know you, when you feel it. You right, and I agree a hundred percent. But you tall, Rick, man. I'm short, Reggie. But you I ain't always <laughs> been tall, Rick, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just been playing on Rick, trying to learn to dance. That's right. Uh, we got one of the greats that's on the line, uh, Mr. Keith Hubbard. We want to reach out to Keith. I got to get him back so he yes, can sir. so he can talk because uh, that that's the best the man in my wedding, man. We go we go back. Yeah, that's that's the navigator, you know. Yes, I I saw him. Uh, I hadn't seen Keith in about twenty years, twenty five years, and it was like uh, when I I saw him on stage at Step Against in twenty eighteen. It was like the prodigal son. I was running to my brother, man. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> you know, when the prodigal gun son messed up, right, and his yeah. dad. Or way in the distance, right, and then right. when you saw he come, saw saw the son coming home, the father started running towards him. Yes, you know, yes. when I saw Keith, I, I started running towards him, man, right. and we just hugged, and it was, it it's was love, just man, it's, it's a yeah, genuine love, man, yeah. Okay, so we we've had our little preliminaries, okay, and I'm glad that we've had this time to, you know, just exchange some things on the lighter side. So let's get into it, and let's let's get a. Let's get a little more. I add some more depth. I'm going to pull up some things um, and let's let's discuss this. OK, good. We can start off with this 
And I'm going to shift and bring this over and you take a look at it. The music won't be playing. I hope it's not playing. If it is, I'm going to turn it down. But check this out. Oh, oh let me turn that music down. Oh. All right. And then let me uh, let me bring myself back to the top, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the dance will be covering me. <laughs> it's covering you right now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I just get that down and just just pull it back. Uh, I should come up and there you go. I am. No, all right. Now, and let me make this just a little bit bigger, okay? All right. Let me, let me put that up there and bring it down here like that. I'm doing this while I'm telling you. Now I'm switching it. There it is. There it is. Okay, so, and let me make sure that is, I'm going to loop it and play it again. All right. Uh, so we can just sit here Curly. and we could talk about this and let me okay. make sure. I can. Okay, good. It's looped. So we're ready. All right. Now this is now, this is what I know of as our version of what they call the get down. All right. Uh, this is what they call today the get down, but this is our version. And this was always done off a of jazz type tune. Mm -hmm. And people would just come up there and we just start clowning. I mean, we just having some fun. And I saw a comment that first uh, attached me to you. I saw a comment that's on Danielle, and I forgot to write it down. I thought I did, but it was on Danielle's post because this is Danielle's video. And when I saw what you said, and it said something like this, if... If you can't see what these people are doing here, you have no concept. You have no idea of what's really going on with it. Can you elaborate your feelings on this style of dancing, uh, on on this uh, tradition uh, from the elders that you see? Well, for me, it's pure excitement. It's, per it's art personified. You know, it's art in motion. It's a beautiful thing to see in real time as opposed to a video, because you, you, you can smell the wood, you can <laughs> hear the laughter, the acoustics are perfect, and you can feel the energy in the room. So this is, to me, what so many people are missing when it comes to bopping slash stepping, because I know the entertainment side is the wow factor, but I'm more into the art form. Mm -hmm. This beautiful art form, man, boy, this is it. This is what I want to do until I'm laid into the grave. That's how powerful it is for me because I fell in love with it. I'm not in lust with this dance. I'm in love with it. Mm. And so you want to be around it with that that you love. You know, you want to ingratiate yourself with the culture, with the music, with the people, you know, it's it's art personified, brother. Man, it's art personified on that wood. Look yeah. at him. Look at that. <laughs> Come on now. And that's and when I saw that and I saw your comment, that just that just endeared me. That just I was attached to. I said, I got to meet this. I got to meet this man, you know. And I was on a journey ever since then, and it, it's mm -hmm. just incredible. Uh, Dimples and Leanna are cousins. They're relatives. I love them both, man. Man. Their dance style. I remember the first time I danced with Leanna. It was years ago. I had met her prior to, but it was years ago. Don Vic had a party across the street from Ford Center Mall. And uh, she and I actually danced. She obliged. And when I tell you, from the time we hit go from that startup and mm. she did that quick step out mm. and if she didn't have to say a word, brother, mm. she said, come on, without saying come on, because it was in her hand, it was in her body language, it was in her facial expression, and she blessed me with two songs, mm. two <laughs> songs, brother. Yeah. It was great. It was yes. great. Well, I graduated uh, with with Jesse with Dimples, mm -hmm. and Leanna's daddy 
uh, he played softball, and I was a softball player. All right. And I would see her out in the park with a little cute self and long hair looking, and you couldn't, nobody would talk to her because they didn't want to get her pops upset. Right. <laughs> but every time, from the first time I danced with Leanna, you know, if I would see her out at, at a club or see her at a set, all we had to do is just, <laughs> I yeah. had if we if our eyes hit, we were going to dance. Yeah, that that was, certain nuance. Yeah, yeah it's it was unspoken. Just, man, it's just about it's just about fun, and uh, you don't get that with everybody you dance with. You do not. You do You don't get that. It's it's just some people that you go into. It's like a basketball player when they hit the zone, you know. And there are just some women that you have a zone with. That's right. There's levels to this, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, and so uh, that's just what we do, and that's our version of having a good time, and that's, you know, we do that off of jazz tunes. Now, some of the things that you've seen, uh, Rick, let me just move this. Some of the things that you've seen, uh, uh, doing your time here uh, on set as far as the uh, the new school and the original school or the because I'm not going to use those school the traditional school uh, what are some of the differences that you've seen that that are those things that make you say hmm I you know what are, what are some of those things that's Hmm, what is this or what are they doing or what are some of the changes that maybe you wish would stay the same or some of the changes that you kind of like, man, y'all don't need to be doing this. What have you seen on the set today that would make oh, you man. That? It, It's a very, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wide range of, of things uh, mm -hmm. from the way people are dressing uh, when going to an, a set or an event. And I understand, you know, people want to dress down, but uh, mm. what I grew up with and what I came into as it pertained to the set, this was an exclusive group. This was not something that was automatically inclusive. Keep talking. This was all about exclusivity, meaning you had to get in where you fit in. So you had to learn to earn your place on the wood when I when I was getting into it. So, you know, I remember dancing with Tina Renee Moore for the first time at the Narfos years ago. Trey Nicole, one of my favorite DJs, was the DJ at the time. And Tina came and asked me to dance. And, uh, you know, because she was one of the, the hostesses for the group Women in Motion. And we, she gave me two songs as well. The first song, she let me get it all out my system. But boy, <laughs> that second song, she let me know who she was, quick, fast, in a hurry. And I already knew who she was, but I kind of, you know, that male ego, you know, I was dressed to impress. I had my shoes shine, my, my tapered fro, my beard, razor thin or whatever. And so I'm thinking I'm looking good and whatever. And, uh, you know, she had to put me to the test. And, uh, she, boy, she let me have it. Then mm. I asked her, so how did I do? And she was like, being Tina, you cool and all, but you need to tone it down. You're a little wild. Oh, my God. Yes, she did. I went through that, too. <laughs> I went through that. Listen, listen. And then I went through that with uh with Calvin Bonds. Okay, cuz wow, that's one of my favorite mentors. Okay, so we were in the 50, right? And so I'm this I'm this young buck, right? And I'm I'm getting on my horse and I, I don't I don't rolled in I don't rolled in town and I'm seeing all I'm seeing all these killers. Nothing but killers. Everybody in the place was a killer. Okay. So just like you said, I'm trying to make my spot. You got I'm to trying, I'm trying to earn my keep. Yes. So I got up there, and when I got done, <laughs> Kevin said, come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> like he does. 
<laughs> he said, come here, boy. He said, come here. And he looked and he said, he said, Reggie, everybody in here know you can dance. He said, calm it down. Less is more. Stay in your spot. That's profound. Less is more. That is profound. And so, you know, compacted. And so when he did, when he told me that, I, I then immediately became a better dancer. Because once you start honing, once you can hone your craft in the I 50, agree. once yeah. you can hone your craft in the 50, because, you know, because a thousand people are get in a three foot space on they will. At, at the 50. They will. And, and the whole key is that you ain't, you're not supposed to touch nobody. And you're not supposed to violate nobody else. No kicking, no elbows, you know. And sometimes I just don't see that in today's culture with the dance sometimes well, that I is lacking reggie between that and just a host of other things in the dance style formation mm -hmm. the dance style formation is a bit more busier up top and less down low mm -hmm. so i was taught torso down even though i had to coordinate my upper body with my lower body i was mm -hmm. still taught Stepping is truly torso down. Mm. That's when you're getting it, particularly in those small, confined spaces. You can't do all that stuff up top if the room is crowded because you're going to mess around and hit somebody, poke somebody, mm. you know? Man. And that's where it can become a problem. You did? You know it. And you can't step on <laughs> nobody's foot. And, and it, it, got so, it got so confusing for me. Um, uh, coming out in my second iteration, uh, I stopped. If I would see somebody and I know that they were, you know, strict on the new school and stuff like that, I went to the other side of the floor. Mm -hmm. I would, I would definitely get out their way. I'll give them respect. You dance and do what you want. Cause I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to romance the dance and I don't want to have radar, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be deal dealing with no radar yeah. trying to focus on uh, being with this woman on the dance floor, on this wood, trying to trying to uh, create art between us. You understand? You said some great things. You said some great things. And so you said, and I need you to talk about this. You said the pattern can be manipulated but not changed. Talk and I stand on that. Because Talk when you start to manipulate the pattern, you're just using improvisational skills to your advantage. So there's a difference between a beat and the rhythm. The beat and the rhythm is not the same when it comes to the song. The beat is the heartbeat, where there's the rhythm is everything in between. Mm. And so that's what true dancers tend to focus in on, at least I do as a dancer, and most of the women or female dancers that I admire and that I dance with, they focus on the rhythm. The beat is always gonna be constant, but that rhythm can change. And so you have to change and adjust with the rhythm. So manipulation within the pattern is a great thing. Changing the pattern mm. is what I, I can't I can't put a stamp on that. I can't co-sign that. I, I I would resent someone trying to change the pattern because if you're changing the pattern, don't call it stepping. Get mm. out of the way. We, you ain't stepping, bro. You ain't stepping, mm. sis. When you're doing all that, it's, 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 it's way over the top. It's over my head. We're going to keep it at the word manipulating the pattern. Mm. The phrase manipulating the pattern, the word manipulation, that's mm -hmm. what we're going to leave it. Because changing it is something totally different. Wow. Wow. And I've heard and I, I've heard a lot of people, you know, coming through with a whole lot of different things. Let me make myself a little bigger. All right. There you go. Now, I've heard a whole lot of things about what people have been doing. And I've seen um, and this is not to criticize, you know, enjoy your dance and dance the way you um 
Uh, they dance the way you, you feel comfortable, but enjoy yourself. The bottom line is for you to enjoy yourself. But I, I just want to recommend to everybody to um, search the dance a little bit more. Uh, search the dance. Search where the dance came from because it's, it's not like being in disco where everybody can, you know, have their say and do what they want to do on the floor. It's it, it's a little bit more coordinated because we all have to think of the same mind to allow everybody to have fun on the floor. You know, now, we Reggie, wanna... does that mean then, and I hate to cut you off. Go ahead. What Does that mean that we, as this generation that's coming behind you guys, have to truly edify, the, the true edification of the dance is about etiquette, being considerate of, of those that are on the floor with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We got to share is that. Is that space. what it's about? That's what I'm, that's what it's about. Talk to me. It's, that's what it's about. Um, you know, cause I, I called when I, when I heard the different term analogies and things that are being used now, uh, in the in the new school community uh and people would a lot of guys now they dance on the on the outside lane uh and for me uh dealing with this if that happened uh you were in violation of the lane for the walkers i mean you know you don't dance on the outside lane because the walkers walkers always had the right of way but when I heard these different groups of steppers, heavy hitters, and, you know, the heavy hitters and things like that, the guys that were popular and all this old kind of stuff, they always had to had the outside lanes. And it seems to me that when I would see these guys doing that, I called it peacocking. I called it the cats was just showing off, you know, on the lanes like they were fishing, <laughs> you know, okay. trying to trying to show the women which women uh show that hey you need to be dancing with me it's like when a peacock open up their tail yeah, right right good you, you show, yeah you're showing the good colors and, and they forget about the circle of protection that the walkers provide when they have that outside lane and that had been going on it was there are two dances that i knew of three several dances that i knew of growing up that all they knew how to do was dance on the outside lane. And James one, Shanks. Yes, sir. James uh, Shanks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I never saw Shanky, Shanky dance on the inside. And Lawrence Jones. I never saw. I never saw. Don Vic, too. I've you never seen I Don Vic. Never saw. And he's one of the ones that I watched faithfully. First time that I seen him dance was with Sharnice at the 50. Mm -hmm. Man, I fell in love just so, by watching. So, Rick, you also said that bopping is rhythm and timing. Well, talk, talk to me about that. Well, it's a different rhythm and it's a different time. And I don't, I can't really break it down in the way that mm -hmm. the hierarchy does or can, but I'm a stepper that can bop. And I do know that the rhythm and timing is different. I know so, that the pattern is the same, but the rhythm and the timing is different. And then you went on to say, and you said this emphatically, you said, steppers, there are dancers that are steppers that can bop and that are there are boppers that can step. That's my mama. My mama is a bopper. Mm -hmm. Been bopping since early 60s from the sock hops with different high schools and going to, like I said, Times Square, uh, Guys and Dials, Dashiki and, and other places. But she can also step, but she is truly a bopper. Okay. Uh, good evening to everybody checking in. Um, I haven't got a chance to call your names, but I just wanted to say uh, hello, and uh, and I'll 
put your put your comment and stuff up. If I don't read your name, charge it to my name. I mean, charge it to my head and not my heart. And then maybe sometimes I can't maybe pronounce it, but I'm gonna fake it <laughs> <laughs> until I make it right. And uh, but it's 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 good that you all are chiming in and looking into this. My next my guest next week will be Pete Frazier. Hey. Pete Frazier will be in next week. And then, of course, uh, coming soon, I have Kimberly Coleman, uh, the the winner of the 1993 contest, uh, World's Largest Stepping Contest, and one of, the, one of the first contestants from the World's Largest to be in a music video. Her and one of those fabulous Alexander brothers, <laughs> Steph and Steve. Steve. We're in solo song. Tell me where you want me to put it, along with uh, Step and Herc. Herc, oh. yes. And so Donald C. Reese is reaching out to you, and thank you, Donald. And uh, comment from Dennis and Keith says, uh, "I dance on the outside, but know how to move and respect the house." And eye contact with the lead was the key for me when coming around the floor, the middle of the floor became a traffic <laughs> <laughs> our video queen is on the line hey denise and i do love denise and let's see hello michelle and let's see who else we got and sharon thank you so much so rick you've also let me ask you a question now too that uh of your of the peers in the new school or from the dancers in the new school Let's let's pick some. Okay. Who do you admire on the male side and who do you admire on the female side as dancers? And then we're gonna talk about your dance. Uh, All right. right. Uh on the male side, my man and my brother Dominique Robinson. Uh of course, the most influential guy to me has been Tick Man Bay. Mm. Hands down, he has been it from the word go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Andre Blackwell, uh, Tony Dow, you know, I don't know if he's old school, new school, uh, Royce Banks, you know, I don't know, Randy, I don't know if they're old school, new school, but these are the cats that I watched. You know, I, I watched Max, I watched, I watched just about everybody in the new school, Maurice Turner, Bobby Taylor, Swan, also known as Malik. Uh, mm -hmm. Noel, may he rest in peace. Uh, man, it's 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 a load of cats that I had that I watched in the new school arena that I just either stole from or just oh, admired. Uh, come yeah, on, I man. said it. I said it. Come on, man. How yeah, you, man. I, I just made it my own. Come you on. You got to. That's how. That's that's the name of the game. What? I thought we only did that. I thought we only did that in the watch and learn generation. Well, yes and no. I think it transitioned to the new school guys, and I haven't mentioned my girls yet. Mm -hmm. I think it transitioned to the guys because there were so many of us, man. You know, I can't say that now in the new millennium. You know, but back in the 90s when the Hot Boys was out and even before that, I mean, them cats, they were on fire, man. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I watched and I learned. And I did a lot of washing. Did, lot you of ever, washing. did you ever go to the set at Sarah J's? I never donned the Sarah J's. I, I never I, peeked in. I never went to because I heard that was the hot spot. I came shortly thereafter. After okay, okay, so you didn't yeah. get a chance, and yeah. so uh, I'm right now. I'm I'm right now trying to get in touch with Raymond, and uh, I reached out to Donnie Davis because I want to get that story, you know, straight out too. Because I heard that set was like the training ground for all the future instructors. That Wednesday night set at Sarah J's, you had Claudel, who you mentioned, uh, Ice, Ice Ray. Ice Rob. Beast. Now, Ice Rob, Ice Rob to me, despite Claudel being my man of the high <laughs> steppers and George Macaroni and Ice Ray. But Ice, when I saw Ice Rob, man, it was like running water. Okay. Just, just leave the faucet open, man. It, it was, 
man, it was it. He was the truth. Ice Rob. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and I was, see, I was gone. I was long gone, man. I was I was over there at ACOG, man. I mm-hmm. had I had left stepping alone, man. I was doing things in Jesus' name. <laughs> hey, man, you living life, brother. Yeah. It's, it's here. Man, it's it, was, was, it was it was a great thing. And so the late great George Macaroni and Claudel yes, were part of that uh that uh, high steppers group, which was like the high stepping really was a skater's move. You know, you're picking up that front leg. And I didn't forget Donnie Davis. I don't want to forget yeah, Donnie yeah, Davis. Don't want to leave him out. Yeah, you picking up that front leg doing that high step. And I used to clown uh, when I would come in and see him, you know, even while I was, uh, you know, even though I'm saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, I would come in and pee me in at a set every now and then. And if I'd see Claude L and I would see one of them, I'd start teasing them and I'd pick up my leg doing a high step. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. today I still do that. Yeah. Today just having some fun. Yeah. you know on the wood so that's good to know oh and then you talked about tech man now i yeah. saw that brother oh yeah, man, man. That he's dude. probably one of the most influential dancers not step dancers in new school I'm and thankful. i love you some tony dow so i don't know if we putting tony dow in old school or no new school because he's a mentor of mine as well tony dow is he taught mm-hmm. me on the tail end of where i was really coming out but tick man, man. Well, i think that brother i think that brother can do some incredible things with his hands yeah and you and know and that, yeah that's but that, that's one <laughs> of the, that's one of the unsung unsung things about uh Tick man is that he got some incredible hand hand coordination with the way he just the way he just touches and does his thing. I and I would tease him when I first saw him. I'd always act like when I was in the place I'd see him. I'd always act like I'd have a pad, you know, and I'm yeah. trying to and then I'm taking notes on him. Right, but, right. But uh, I like to see him. Uh, I like to the the way he moves to improve his game. He never rests. Uh, I seen him uh, a couple of times at the set at the sets I'm going out to. This this guy is constantly working on his walk game. He's working with uh, the young lady, Lady Margaret, okay. and I'm seeing this guy doing something. I was, look at this boy, and then he's actually trying to do other things in his dance. I've seen, uh, and I'm really proud when I see him change tempo in mm-hmm. his dance. Temp tick. He can go and do it, and then he'll break off into a slow bop, or he'll even stop walking. Yeah, and that's us all the way. When you can do, when you can break and do any one of the dances. I mean, when you can do all three of the dances in, in the any one song. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yes, sir. So Tell it's me not what a graduation; you... it's a continuation. Mm. Yeah, dude. Mm. Yeah, mm. I give you that one. Yeah, mm. I give you that. Yeah, it's not a graduation. <laughs> it's a continuing. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm one of the next culture shocks for me was uh, every time you look around, it's just stepping, 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 stepping. And like, ain't nobody walking. And I'm like, I mean, I'm like, uh, what you talking about? Because walking was out here first. And I'm trying to figure out what you're talking, what's going on here. And why does the walk? Why was walking? Why did that have to be buried? I mean, I heard, man, I heard stories like, oh, "Ain't nobody, you know, you, it's an intimate dance," and all. That. I heard all kinds of excuses not to walk, and I heard nothing about the reasons for walking. Angie Fain is saying hi to Rick and Reggie Miles. That is one of my female mentors and one of the first people, other than Danielle that danced with me way back in 98 at old Mr. G's or at three G's on Tuesday night with Daryl and Margette. Mm. Between her and Danielle, they were the only two that would dance with me. Well, That's you so. talk about the ladies. Some, some, who were some of the best ladies? Well, not best, but who were some so great ladies? So we're talking old school, we're talking new school. Both, from so both. So old yeah. school, man, shoot. We talking Tina Roberts, Renee Moore. 
We mm-hmm. talking Leanna, Dimples. Mm-hmm. We talking Black Mary. Oh. I watch Belinda from the Fox sets. Pat. Hey, she out here. Yeah, I watch Pat. I, I watch, it's some people that I don't really know their name. I remember Andrea, or, or is it Andrea that danced with Daryl a lot now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to watch her like a hawk. Uh, she's a young lady, she's passed away by the name of Sandra. She was light-skinned, short. I kind of stole some moves from her at 3G's. Uh, she danced with Daryl Davis a lot. Uh, of course, Marjette Coleman. Uh, shoot. Uh, that's shit off the top of my head. Bro. Cynthia Shanks, oh. of course. Can't leave her out. Oh. <laughs> Can't leave her out. You know, that's, that's my auntie. I call Auntie Cynthia because she's been around the family for Woo. so long. So that's old school. New school, man. Sharnice, she has been a mentor for about 15 years, man. Uh, we used to battle on the floor. It was unspoken, but you can just feel it. Tina, mm. we would talk smack out loud to each mm. other. Danielle, mm. she would spin like a top. So, you know, I had so much fun. I don't, you know, I know Tina's old school, but I don't know if Sharnice is old school, new school. I know Danielle is new school. Uh, so that's where it gets the delineation. School, got that old soul, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the, the true delineation for me between old school and new school was kind of mixed, you know, because mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. you said, well, if, if you had to learn in class, then you're not officially old school. You're more right. new school. I did take a class. I know some that did take a class. I can't speak on Sharnice. I think she learned when she was a teenager out on the set and in the house with our family. Uh, I know Tina been around over 40 years. So Lola, you know, mm-hmm. Charles C. Femme Fatale. Uh, man. That's that's all I got off the top of my head, brother. That's man, this, man, this is a lot of great women. It's a lot of great women. I've been trying to pull uh I've been trying to pull Belinda's leg to come on in here, but you know, Belinda, she won't I won't I wanted one of them Fox sets. One yeah, of them. Yeah, man. Cause they they've been on both sides, both sides of the street. They can tell the story from and, 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 and let me say this, man. You know, without with me being six five with no shoes on, uh I had a tendency to not have people my height. So let mm. me give a shout out. To Audrey Freeman, oh. to, to, to Jaqueline, and to Vonda Gill. Those were the tall women that I danced with that I couldn't become totally complacent in dancing with shorter women. I had to readjust my dance style to fit women that were nearly my height, mm. you know, or women that wore heels. That's something that to me has changed drastically in this new age of stepping where, man, my mom said, Lil Rick, cause that's my nickname because I'm Rick Jr. <laughs> she said, Lil Rick, when you dance as a woman, you should always have on the heel because it affects your movement. Mm. I said, wow, does it? She said, yes, it does. I can't dance in flats. Mm. I, get, I work too hard to dance in flats. And Tina Renee Morse told me the exact same thing in 2009. Mm. We were in Sharon Bolden's basement. Shout out to Sharon. Sharon Bolden's basement in 2009, the Thursday before the contest. And Tina was in gym shoes. Mm. And she said, I can't dance. I don't have my heels. I can't dance. Wow. Wow. You know, uh, wow, that's so we we gonna get to that. But hello to Dominic, Dominic Dow. She's checking in. Uh, Dominic. Hey, Dow. Dominic. She's checking in, Rick. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of things. Hey, Demetria, There's a couple of things we gonna have to do. We gonna have to hit this. We definitely gonna have to talk about this music. Okay. So let me do this. Let All me right. do this. Let me do this because I'm on a. I gotta. I gotta get on your dance. Okay. I got to get on your dance because, like I said, when I seen this dude dance, I said, whoa. <laughs> you know, I want to watch and learn. I want, I wanted to become a thief in the night. I'm saying this dude is, oh, this guy is doing everything 
that I know of and that I held true in the dance, but you knew school. So it reminded me of uh, what your master instructor, your sensei told you, yes. hey, Daryl Davis. Daryl Davis just told me, and, I, and I, I made this as part of the bottom line of conversations. He said, bopping is the original dance. Then he said, stepping is the popular name. There it is. They're both the same dance. Whoa. The difference is in how you manipulate. I agree. Step. I agree. That's what the bull said to me. That's what the dancing bull said to me. Mm -hmm. And I, rem I listen, I, I remember that. I Boom. And so it, it has internalized. And I, you know, I can take that and do like a dissertation. Yes. Now, off of that, yes. what he said. Yes. So that went in. That went into my professor. You know, into my professor gears. You know, yes. and I can handle that. Yes. And so we're gonna talk about this. And then, when I see you dance, and some of the things that I see you do in your dance, you jacking the slacks, popping the collar, kicking your leg out, and then when you you killed me, when you kicked the leg back, I said, "Oh, blank." <laughs> I said, look at this. I said, oh, blank. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look at this man. Yes. Do this here. And you lean forward and it was, it was a combination of class, elegance, style, smoothness to a degree that I have not witnessed. I have not seen since I was a young boy doing that stuff. I can't do it like that no more. But I saw this. I said, oh, blank. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't handle it. So let's look at this. All right. And let's look at how you're doing. And I think you're dancing with, with your my wife. wife. Yes, yes. My lovely wife. Okay. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Weatherspoon. How you doing? <laughs> All right, don't let me. I don't be remiss. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not disrespecting family, but let's. Let's check this out. All right. And the music to this is Crazy by uh Crazy by Rosie, Rosie Gaines. Gaines. And which is a classic tune. All right, I gotta stop it right there. Okay, cause see, right. you, I got I'm gonna take it back just a little bit more because I'm gonna let you cause you cocked your leg up. Look. Yes. I say, oh <laughs> <laughs> so you coming out the star, right? Yes. One hand, watch sliding, pick it up, boom, uh, stomp. Oh, I was dead. I was dead yes. because, because traditionally, the stomp. And let me move this video over just a little bit more. Okay, the stomp because listen, the dance is really uh, historically with uh, black men and dancing. There were only two times that we danced when we were going to war and in courtship all right and you talking to this when because uh when i dance and pat teases me about this when i know that i am uh about to come uh, when i'm into this dance with this woman the first thing i'm gonna do is stomp all that's right. my approval bam let me get to this part where you jack them slacks let me get back let me take it back Y'all got it's it's Luke, y'all, so y'all can see it again. Look at you. <laughs> up that, man, you kicking up, shaking the dirt off your shoe. Look at this here, man. Boom. And, the, and that one hand is killing me. You doing all these turns. There it is, that kick out on the side. Then you I now look at it. Shake your legs, sliding up. Oh. oh so man. let me say this, brother Reggie. So <clears throat> when I was taught by, as you affectionately know him as the bull, Daryl Davis, at Olive Harvey. One of the things that he wanted me to do was get out in real time and dance because he felt you cannot learn everything in class. So what he did was he made sure to invite me to his set, which was the second Saturday of every month with the untouchables. Mm -hmm. The untouchables were George Macaroni, wow. Dennis, Dimples, himself, 
and Verna. Those were the untouchables. From that point, I started to get into Rose Wellington set every fourth Saturday of the month at the same spot, Mr. G's. Every fourth Sunday was the taste with Good Time Productions. It was Cheryl and Tracy. 39 That's years. I seen them come out, man. And so I stole a lot of stuff from them, from them cats that was coming in. The men were doing it. They were dressed to impress and they were dancing. So that's what you see in real time with my wife. I'm paying homage at this beautiful museum in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm honoring one of the uh, the great black artists in Ernie Barnes, uh, honoring his legacy and his artwork. We were there the very next day and uh, we were asked by Capital City Steppers in Raleigh, North Carolina to uh, do a presentation. And so I knew going in that I would be dressed to impress and I would pay homage to my old school counterparts wow. in this beautiful art form that we know as Stepper. Now, see, that's that's just like really impressive. That just that right there, you know, you knock me down because that's just not something that you see oftentimes when uh uh coming from uh the younger generations now i'm not saying that they don't do that because yes. you're a living witness to you're a living person that has done that but for you to eat, internalize what was in your own dance to demonstrate the carrying carrying that in the future man now i did look let me let me <laughs> let me bow down let me bow down because that's one of the traditions that my generation, I think we failed to do that. We failed Which to, was, to encourage you all to and, and, and encourage you in the dance and then honor you in the dance while you're doing it, to keep it going. So when, when we see you doing what we do, encourage you instead of always trying to have something negative to say, because what? I think. Go well, ahead. Reggie, I understand what you're saying, but I got to count kind of kind of rebuttal. Because when you fall in love with something and it's not lust, it doesn't matter what the people around you are mm. giving you. Just because I'm not getting the instant gratification of a polite and courteous hello, because I'm not getting a smile from a Tina or Sharnice at the time that I was dancing, did not discourage me. Or because of the no thank yous that I got from Lola and Charlesy, from, and Cassandra from Femme Fatale did not discourage me one iota. I fell in love with the dance. And mm -hmm. so I continued the courtship with the dance. You did? I yes, continued sir. the courtship. So even though I may not have gotten all of the pats on the backs and the high fives, I continued my quest for knowledge and understanding of this beautiful art form. And I certainly impress upon others to do the same okay all right all right i'll i'll settle i'll settle yeah down. yeah please I, I, i'll settle yeah. I, yeah, don't be too hard on yourself yeah I, I'll, settle, <laughs> I'll settle i'll settle for that you know because uh you know i had great i had great people in front of me calvin bonds uh lester gibbs james shanks and although shanky was only two years old i had great people in front of me yeah and um you know, they, they told us things. They told us things, and we we followed them. And, oh, let me say hello right now to Michael Black Cool Thornton. Uh, what's That's going on? Man. Yes, sir. What's going on, Black Cool? We acknowledging you this evening and uh, from Texas. Uh, hey, Tanya, how you doing? Uh, those of you that are on the way to Chicago for the uh, 31st World's, World's Largest, uh, come on here. Come on in. Uh, meet meet us there meet me there mr pete frazier will be our guest uh next week on uh our next show on conversations and then we're going to continue to move forward with some other past winners in the world's largest stepping contest uh we're going to talk to kimberly coleman who danced with uh one of the fabulous alexander brothers steve alexander and um uh, and they were in the first video by Solo called uh, Tell Me Where You Want Me to Put It. And so we're going to talk to her about that experience. Yes. 
Okay, Belinda says, say it come for the love of the dance. That's good. There it is. That part, you're getting a lot. And uh, Rick, you was dancing with somebody at uh, Three G's, and you're getting this. Let me see. Okay. Keith Hubbard, I'm looking, just running through. Thank you, uh, Black Cool, and we're gonna we're gonna do this. But this happens because conversations, conversations is an oral history project. It's an oral history project. You'll be able to go back and look at this, and you will hear different viewpoints from the guest. Okay. You know? You'll hear different viewpoints from the guests and then you can start formulating and you can, can begin to see uh, this history and how we did it and how we used to do it, you know, on your own. So okay. and that's what this is all about. Cause, yeah, chronicle. Uh, yeah, it's a good chronicle. Yes. Yeah, that's all. That's all yeah. this is. That's all this is. The best things in life are free. So I'm, I'm laying it out for you and it'll be here on YouTube. I got I got. Uh, 10,000, 11,000 people following me right now. And so we want to keep this going. Uh, what, you know, okay, we asked that question. Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask it again. No, no, no I won't ask it again. Uh, so, where do you see or what can we do as a community to uh, to bring more unity in what we do? So I think it's a divisiveness as it pertains to the history. There's confusion between old school, new school, out of towners, et cetera. And so it would help if we as Chicagoans got on the same page in one accord as it pertains to the foundation and the pillars of that history. Just like the Bible that has so many different stories, well so many different books in the New Testament, yet they all come to the same conclusion that Jesus was crucified and that he rose again after the third day. You did? Don't so, let me, don't, don't get me going because I, <laughs> I, I start seeing stuff that people won't understand. Yeah, there. man. Reggie done, Reggie done went crazy up in there. <laughs> so if we can, because I want to be able to be that person that flies the flag, be that shining light, that beacon of hope as it pertains to giving good positive vibes and energy to the generation behind me to continue this beautiful art form. Because it is an art form that should not just only be with the old schoolers, if, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It should be carried on from generation to generation. It should be taught in high schools as far as I'm concerned mm. uh, because it's such a beautiful art form. And it's an art form that to me is an African-American art form that should be able to stand the test of time if put out right. So what can we do as this generation moving forward put out the correct and proper history as it pertains to walking, bopping, stepping, freestyle, what it derives from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I did, uh, I have started, you know, putting the eras together. And uh, one of the, one of the things that, I want to do is to uh, move this toward some scholarly study. Okay. You know, as well. And uh, because one of the things that uh, even though people want to dance, they want to have fun and they want to be competitive with that, it is an art form and it Say is it and it is something that got us through. Dancing helped us to survive many things. 
you know, part of us for living. Centuries. Yeah, I mean, yes, for centuries, because they forced centuries. us, they forced us to dance. Yes, sir. But then when we start started dancing, um, I think one of the greatest tests was during the depression, uh, when the rent parties yes. started and people, you know, in their homes would modify certain parts of their house, their basements and stuff like that, turn them into little lounges, especially okay. in, in this town in Chicago. That's how families were, were making extra money or whatever. And the dance, um, for me, the best part was that we were able to then lean on one another. You know, as we go through the pressures of this thing called life, you know, because in the early times of the dance now, uh, during after the Depression, you know, we didn't have the great jobs. We weren't aircraft, you know, we weren't pilots, stewardess, and firemen. We weren't, we didn't have those prestigious jobs. We had, we were janitors, doormen. You know, we had, yeah, we, orders. Yeah, yeah, we had the menial jobs, right? And on the weekends, on Friday and Saturday, we would come together to lift each other's spirit. Amen. We've lost a lot of the spirit of us being a family as people. We've lost that due to the competitiveness, the expansion, a whole lot of things. Ego. So, yeah, well, that's the big part. That's the big part. And uh, because there is a difference, there is a difference in social dancing and competitive dancing. And let, me ask, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Have you have you competed in a contest before? Never, never. It's never been my forte. It has never been in my spirit. when I learned this dance to ever compete. Although Daryl asked me politely if I wanted to compete, I politely told him no. L.C. Henderson, my second instructor, asked me if I wanted to compete. I politely told him no. Tony Dow asked me if I wanted to compete in the basement of his home, and I politely told him no. It has never been a thing for me. I never approached the dance from the side of competition. Mm. Mm. I always approach the dance as a student. Mm. This is truth to power. I've always, because of the music that I <sighs> listened to when I was a kid, from the gospel to the R&B to the house music to the jazz, I have a plethora of music at my disposal and in my spirit. And so when I would roller skate on the skate floor or when I would dance at house music parties or when I started to learn stepping, I just pulled from our resources what I had at my disposal, mm -hmm. which was all the music from a little boy, from my mama dancing with me, you know, from the roller skating rink and funk music and all that stuff. And, you know, it was, I just pulled it all out. And so dancing on a stage where people are critiquing me in such a way where I'm being judged, I didn't want no part of it. Mm. Whoo. So, you know, through all of that, you know, and me talking with you and me knowing some other great people, I have come to the conclusion that some of the greatest dancers have never been in the contest there it is there it is brother truth to power mm, mm, mm. <laughs> know that trust that believe that yeah. my people on the east coast hey dj bev had a great time with her this weekend i went to the chess studios this weekend all right and i saw the the studio where Billy Stewart recorded some of his music and some of the great blues singers. 
I was looking for my cut. I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to reboot my machine, right? Mm -hmm. And reboot the computer because I wanted to play uh, this cut called The Stepper. I've made a loop on it. <laughs> All right. That And it's a jazz cut. And speaking of jazz artists, let me tell you, and let me share this with you. If you haven't heard, uh, Ramsey Lewis passed away on the day, and he was a great jazz. He made um, one song, one of my favorite songs from him on the Stepper set was uh, Making Love With You. Yes. You know, and so uh, that was a great song. And I think he played in uh, on uh, the piano on a lot of the uh, house song house. He was part of the house band uh, under Chess Records, I think. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm gonna have to ask somebody else. And uh, Sonia, okay, everybody, look, Rick, you speaking true? Speaking true. Ramsey oh. Lewis. I was an avid uh, fan and listener of Ramsey Lewis, being a Chicagoan himself. Mm -hmm. uh, may he rest in peace and wake up in paradise. Um, he also formed the group called Urban Nights, which was, yes. which was an yes. urban contemporary jazz group yes. that I listened yes. to uh, a lot. So, uh, you know, shout, shout out to him. May he rest in peace again. And uh, I just, uh, my heart goes out to his family. Well, you know, uh, uh, our brother John L. Mitchell says, He's quoting you. He said, approach the dance as a student. He said, this brother Rick is dropping some serious quotes. That's, brother, that's brother John. And uh, he's a member at, well, he, he attends the Apostolic Church of God, too. Where I was baptized October 4th, 1992. Arthur <laughs> Embrasure, may he rest in peace as well. <laughs> well, I was, well, I was baptized November fourth, nineteen ninety four. I am grace. Man, you yeah, know, man. and it's been some. It's been some serious people in that church that I know on the uh, on the set. Keith is chiming in. He did a video with Ramsey Lewis, and one All of right. a great. One of the great steppers out there is uh, David Calhoun. All right, listen, you all need to throw up a couple of questions while we're still. Let's see. We got a few more minutes. Thank you so much for your patience. And thank you so much, Rick, for you spending this time with us. Let me say this, uh, Reggie. Um, I have a friend of mine that lives here by the name of Sharvin Whitted. Mm -hmm. He came up with a great phrase or quote as it pertains to stepping and learning this art form that we come have. on come on so he's a graphic designer and uh in advertising and what he said to me i use when i'm doing private lessons with uh males or females alike and that is when we're using the foundation of music i also like to put in the parameters of the importance of fundamentals, mm -hmm. flow, mm -hmm. and flair. He, Sharvin Wittick, gave me that. Fundamentals, flow, and flair. In that order. Flow. There's fundamentals. Fundamentals, first, flow, and flair. Flow, flow and flair. Okay. And I use that as a uh, teaching mechanism when I'm doing private lessons for anyone that wants to learn. It's very important that you have the fundamentals first, and then you have to get into the flow. It's very important that you get into the flow or the rhythm of the music. You have to become ingratiated and connected and engaged with the music, yes, before the flair comes into your dance. You can't start with flair out the gate. Mm. You're learning the steps, but it's so much larger. It's so much bigger than the steps. And so, you know, go ahead. Well, now, you know, uh, there's been a lot of microwaving of this dance. But yes, it's condensed to the to the lowest power, brother. It's been a lot of microwaving, and yeah. uh, and. You know, I've even heard I've even heard some people say uh, 
I've even heard one person, some people say that the evolution of the dance is even when the dance eliminates certain aspects of it. Now that's been hard for me to swallow. I understand. Cause I don't believe, I believe in evolution, just not revolution. Yeah. Okay. Talk to me. Yeah. That's where I'm at with it. You know, I, 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 be, I become resentful considering that I've been born and raised in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So when you mm -hmm. come, whether you are Chicagoan or otherwise, when you come and try to change and rearrange something to best suit you and your city or your dance style, uh, I take offense to it because I put in the work, I put in the time, I put in the effort to do this dance effectively and correctly, which is moving my feet on the male side. These men are getting lazy. I understand why, because there's so many more women, so they don't have to put in the work. But man, come on, if you're gonna do this dance, you got to move your dog on feet, bro. Because it's about timing, it's about rhythm. It's about body positioning, body angling. When I would watch Claudel and his angling with his body, his shoulders, when Daryl taught me, it was about mirroring your partner, mm. mirroring your partner. And then I had to learn to follow, not literally, but figuratively, follow what my female counterpart is doing. When I was dancing with Leanne, I had to, I was following despite the push and pull because she was doing something that she has been doing for 50 something years. I'm a young buck, so I have to pay homage and fall back, stand down. I have to let off the accelerator. I can't let my ego get the best of me. I have to pay homage to the people that laid the path before me. This dance is not about me, it's about us. Mm, I mean, I like, see, I'm, I'm done. See, I'm, I'm through. I can't, I can't. Speaking I truth can't. to power, brother. Yeah, I can't handle I can't handle stuff like that, you know, because I've been I've been trying. I don't I don't want to change. I don't want to argue. I don't want to I don't want to do anything. I don't want to fuss about it. none of that stuff. Well, no I'm more. not confrontational. I'm conversational, brother. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to do nothing about that anymore. I'm not going. I'm not going to speak. I I said some. I said some about uh about a discovery. We was at I, I was at uh, Shanice's place spinning. Yeah, and I saw this young man, uh, and he was dancing. He was dancing with this with this lady, and I thought I looked at this girl and I thought she was she was beautiful thing in the world. I I just I fell in love. Yeah, and I just couldn't understand for the life of me why he was turning her every time. And it, like it wasn't even three seconds. They was in another turn in another turn, in another turn. And so I messed around, you know, being, being ignorant. I said, I said 9,875 turns. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's so it, it messed me up so bad, Rick, that I had to play a walk song and I wouldn't dance with that woman. Cause I, I was like, I was like, cause I'm, and that's when I said, tell ladies, uh, when I when I, I tell them I can't step, what I'm really saying is that I can't turn. I understand. I can't turn. You know, I understand. I can't, I can't turn. Point I'm, taken. Point taken. Yeah. Yes. And so, because a lot of times, uh, the way the dance has moved forward, uh, a lot some some women want to do that, and a lot of women don't want to do that. This is true. You, you know, so and I don't push it. So when I'm saying to you, I said when I when I introduce myself and talk, I'm, what I'm telling you is that I'm not going to turn you. Don't expect that from me. Don't even look. And and then uh, it's like certain ways that I can move my hands, or I'll get ready to move my hand, and the woman is expecting me to do one of the new school moves. I, and I tell them, I pull them right. Look, I'm not, I'm not doing no new school move. <laughs> <laughs> I say forget about that. You know, we got to adjust to it. But the one thing that I have found and I'm not going I'm not fussing about it is that regardless of when you learn how to dance, you know, I'm going to try to find a way to dance with you. You know, and that's that's just all to that. 
because I want to get I want to get the dance with you twice. And then if I if a woman danced with me two times, then I know I did something good. You know, <laughs> I did something good. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when uh, what the two worlds are. You know, because I'm going to just tell look, I'm not going to turn you. And we just going to, we going to pick it up from there. And if you're not, if you're not happy with the dance after that, then I'm not mad. Then I won't come back and ask you again. You know, that's, that's not a problem. Reggie, Nobody can dance with everybody. Reggie, let me say this, man. Um, you know, my uncle, Sylvester Baker, challenged me years ago at the 50 yard line with telling me, after he saw me sweating, getting off the floor, he said, mm, mm, Lil Rick, you cool and all, but mm, mm. you got a real stepper until you know how to walk. Bingo! And Bingo. man, when I tell you, that was an epiphany for me, and I, I really became a student of the dance, particularly as it pertains to walking. I did my due diligence in learning how to walk the right way. And that's not to say that Daryl Davis didn't teach me in class, but I put it on the back burner because it was all about stepping. It was easy uh, for me. Now, wait, wait a minute now. How can I, look, you how, heard what I said, man. I'm, I'm speaking truth to power. I'm giving you my experience. So I understand what you are. You about to go with this, but I got to give you Ricky Weatherspoon Jr. Also known as Tall Rick, his experience. Talk to My me. My experience was it was about stepping. It wasn't about bopping. It wasn't about trios. It wasn't about man on man or freestyle or whatever you want to call it. Everything was about stepping, brother. But when he hit me mm -hmm. with that, it was an epiphany. So I learned mm -hmm. how to walk. One of my favorite partners at the time, because she was coming from Dre and Company, and to her own was Sharon Bolden. So I learned off the cuff by watching Lawrence, the person that you had on last week. He was one of my <laughs> favorites. He never knew it. But him, Larry Thomas, Isaiah Thomas's brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. NBA player. Yes, sir. Lawrence and man, when I tell you, and watching those two fellas walk the floor, Larry and Lawrence, man, for me, it was butter. I said, I got to get this. I got to get this dance. And I stole or tried to steal from them, even to the point that I watched Stan and Cynthia Shanks at a set that they did to include Don Vic at the South Shore Cultural Center on 71st and South Shore Drive. Mm. They did a set there one Friday night and I watched Stan and Cynthia walk together and they was walking kind of sort of hesitation off the beat. Woo, baby, it was it for me. So walking is definitely one of my favorite things to do, more than stepping. So uh, we got a got a great compliment, uh, Rick. Hey, Rick and Reggie, one of the best cultural historical conversations about dance, bop, freestyle, Chicago stepping that I've heard in a while. Hey, Desita. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. Won't he do it? Yeah. So I mean, we we sitting up, we we set up, and we we did this. We set this down. And we're bringing it the way it should be brought. And this is like conversation, no controversy, no debate, <laughs> you know, just just conversation. We talking about the experiences that each other has had. Let's talk about this music before we get out of here. All right. Hey, you, you highlight and you say that music is like really important now what do you mean by that because it's a lot of good music today all right but a lot of the music that i hear today is just about yeah i can't i can understand where you're coming from reggie i just don't agree with a lot of 
good music today. I don't agree with there's a lot of music today. So okay. I tend to mm-hmm. uh, delve into my jazz background and listen to a lot of jazz. Uh, you know, the neo soul is cool, but again, it doesn't really speak to my spirit, to my soul. So mm-hmm. to me, stepping is lacking soul. So a lot of what you see is robotic and mechanical. It's not just based on people counting, but it's also based on the lack of soul that's not in the spirit of the dancers. Oh, God. They're just going through the motion. They're not really ingratiating themselves or connecting to the music, which is the foundation of what we know is this art form. You know, um, and just this weekend, um, at the at the shoe shop on 75th, the owner had a party and I just happened to go by there and I was seeing a lot of the elders and a few new schoolers came in there and uh, uh, Slick Rick played Life in the Country. That's my man, Slick Rick. He was another one that I watched. Mm-hmm. Light Bright. That's why I used to yeah. call Light Bright. Yeah. Yeah. Slick Rick played Life in the Country. And I, I was trying to get out of there. You know, I say, man, man, I, you're supposed to play some, you know, some your contemporary stuff so I could have walked on away. <laughs> <laughs> But as long as you play classics, man, I, it's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delay my time. And and for some odd reason, it just seems like some of the, you know, some of the, some of the great older songs, they still sound just as good. I had a hard time uh, when I heard some members of the new school uh, uh, marketing the fact that that there would be no I heard about that. Yeah, yeah I had a, I had a, yeah. I had a I had a hard time with that. And the only way that I came to, you know, to a balance and to a compromise with that is that I understood that these individuals uh that were bringing this they they weren't originally from Chicago. So let me say this, Reggie, you know, Mm -hmm. I am big and I am certainly hard on DJs because DJing in and of itself is a skill set. Not Mm. everyone can do the job of a DJ. Mm. So for me, I listen to Herb Kent, Jim Rags. I listen to Willie Cox, Sam Chapman, Melo Mm. Chris. I listen to DJ Dan. I mm. listen to so many different DJs that knew and honed their craft. It is truly a skill set. I can know the music, but that don't mean I'm going to get up there and DJ because it's a skill set. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't make Come me on, man. Don't make me cry here. Don't make me cry because I can't, I can't understand. And this was... This Everybody from, just can't get up there and just hit play. Man, listen, listen. I, I and for the life of me, I don't know why. At, I don't know why at these sets. And listen, I got this quote from Chase Day. I don't know why you got to play thirteen stepping songs in a row before you play a walk song, or you got to play twenty six walk songs before you play. Uh, it's like every two hours they're gonna play three walking songs. Yeah, that's a that's a, a general offensive to uh, people that love to walk. Mm-hmm. Calvin Barnes told me out of his mouth the reason why he moved and stayed in Chicago. You better tell that was for the art of this Chicago dance called walking, and yet we have totally eliminated, disregarded. Put on the shelf mm. that which is a part of stepping. Mm. I've seen it all my life. Now you come along and say, all we're going to do all night is stepping in line dance. Stepping in line dance. You're not going to walk, though. We're not going to play 
something to break the monotony of stepping? Man. Fast music? Man, I just... And because I'm like, and this is going back to, this is going back to what you, to what you said about, uh, you just can't get up there and just play music. No, you cannot. And you got to have, your music should tell a story. It should. Your music should tell a story. But I think the way, a lot of guys now today, and a lot of guys today, they're musicians uh, because they've learned to take this uh, uh, the controller and this this technology, and they play the they play the uh, the music like it's a, like it's an instrument. And I think the shortfall on these guys, or uh, some of the newer guys, is that uh, they they miss the community of the set or they didn't, I think the only thing that they came into uh, on the set was, was disco music and hip hop music, you know, up tempo music all night long. And it's like, people think that just because you play a slow, long, so slow song or a song that where people can come together and get close to one another, that that's the end of the set. And I, that's just don't, I can't, I, I can't, figure that out for the life of me so, because go so ahead let, you, let me say this man and, and i know we have not touched on this but i'm going to and i know that this 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 conversations piece and i know we are short in time but i have to say this from the bottom of my heart uh because i am a dancer and because i am a lover of music i have a total disdain i have a distaste for the amount of remixes uh -oh. that continue Woo. to plague our community. Let me Woo. say this mm. before mm. you chime in. I'm speaking to the DJs that have a tendency to want to recreate an original song that a sound engineer, a music producer, an artist, and a band or orchestra took the time to go in a sound booth for hours on end to make a record for you to come and put an emphatic beat and say, this is what it is, loop it for 10 minutes, and then call it yours. Brother, sister, you're disrespecting the art of music. Period. Oh, God. Now, I may get some flack for that from my friends that are DJs, but I got to say it. And I love original music. I love original style stepping. I love the art of good quality music. Whether mm. they're classics, whether it's R&B, whether it's jazz, or what have you. But for you to come and put an emphatic beat and loop it to make it longer with your lazy so-and-so, to me, that speaks volumes. Mm. Mm. For you as a DJ, go back to the drawing board if you're doing that. Man, I, I'm on I had to say it. I'm sorry. I'm I had to say it, bro. I'm glad you said it because I had I had to leave that one alone because I, I I don't I don't want them they mad at me already. Well, they about you know. to be mad at me too, bro. And I got friends that are DJs. Man, and uh, so <laughs> Black Cool said it's it's not just the newer DJs doing that. Okay, now now Black Cool. Uh, we're gonna have to speak off. Uh, we're gonna speak offline on that. Not saying anybody in particular, but no, I am not are, pointing fingers. Who are the newer DJs? <laughs> that's, you know, that's because uh, okay, because the line, uh, as far as the DJ line and the DJ tree goes, okay, there's Sam, and then from everybody that came in Sam's crew and after after all that stuff. I'm the baby of that bunch and I'm 68. 
Okay. And when it came to the next line on Steppers, the beginning was with Steve Breeze. And that was my man. Man, he rest in peace. Man. That man. was my man. Man, he and I man, it was a litany of DJs that I listened to from Vincent Randell, yeah, yeah, Steve Steve. Brewer. I mean, it's a host of DJs. DJ Raphael, DJ Cross, mm. DJ Calvin, DJ Jeff, may he rest in peace. They used to be oh, at the 50. Man. Jeff at the 50. Oh, man. Man. Come oh. on, dog. Come on, man. man. I, when I would when I would come into town, if I would come into town and I would stop by there, he would just, he would do whatever I want. Now, Cross, I, I'm crazy about Cross now. That's my man. Uh, Watch your mouth now. That's my man. Yeah, I, I'm crazy about Cross now because Cross even at a new school set, right? When I come into Heroes, when I go into Heroes, Cross is going to give me three walking songs. He's not going to play. He's going to give it to me too when he know I'm in town. He's going to give it to me too. You're right. right. Shawnee should say, he, don't, he only play like that because you in town. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he going he gonna to give it to me. He, I yeah, mean, man. He, and some de- look, some DJs, man, it's like when you hey, uh you you can you you gonna change the tempo, break it down. It's like you gotta do a root canal with them, or that it's killing them. Cause yeah. I think one of the problems, I think one of the problems is is that a lot of them get their gratification from seeing how many bodies that are on the floor. You understand? But and that's where they come from in this disco world because when you in the disco ain't nobody doing everybody on the floor anyway (laughs) Reggie, have you you know daryl davis taught me this have you just sat back and went into a club that was known as stepping and watched the floor when that shenanigans starts to happen have you actually just watched the floor daryl used to told me tell me it should be like this not like this mm-hmm. the floor should be like this mm-hmm. so when you see a lot of bopping up and down something's wrong something's wrong and that's what i see a lot of when it comes to that music because that generates a certain energy a certain vibe a certain spirit and it brings it to the floor. And that, I, I just, man, I can't subscribe. I personally, because of how I was taught and what I've seen since a little boy and what I've seen in learning it, I just can't subscribe to that energy, Ooh. bro. Woo, now listen, now, Letha, I love you. Letha, I love you so much. So like like the remix of that Me and Mrs. Jones. Church. Catch! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, and then, you know, uh, it 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 had got so, it had got so. Uh, I when I would go out when that song came out, and it's, I knew when the DJ was going to play it. Yeah, but you thought that it was the real deal. No, I didn't. I knew when oh, I knew. Went, oh, because you no, know. okay, because, that's, fair. No, that's fair. Because the Billy Paul version was never played on set. Wow. I don't recall ever playing the Billy Paul version of me and Mrs. Jones. That was okay. a good radio cut. But when they put that beat on it and cut it up, uh, as soon as I hit that, man, doo, 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 and looping it, when they did that loop, man, I, I'd lead a set. I got yeah. I got to go. I, I, can't, I can't handle it. Yeah. And then everybody, you know, everybody plays it. Everybody plays it. And it's like, you know, the DJs act like they trying to, you know, it's like a, a state secret when they get a when they get a song and then when they find out that everybody likes it, uh, then they start sharing. Yeah. I don't even want that song. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> don't I get, don't it. get it to me. You know, don't get it to me because I ain't I don't want it. Wow, yeah. we get we getting a yeah. good one, Joanne Kane. Talking about yeah. Breeze, uh, yeah. Don is uh, cross play is my song when I come in the heroes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I definitely you tell Cross that because you know Cross does his thing when he sees me. He don't wait, you know. Yeah, he don't wait. And then Keith Hubbard speaking, uh, Jack A. Ballard. Mm-hmm. So I don't like. Uh, 
a whole lot. Jeffrey Clark. Oh, good. To, man, uh, Mr. Clark, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to reach out to you and uh, talk to you because uh, you started that thing in Detroit. So we definitely going to have to talk. I, I have I, a question I, for you, Reggie. Go ahead. So with you inviting me on this show, okay, it was a personal invite, correct? Yes, sir. So let me shift gears for a second, and I know we are short of time, but I, I have to say this, because I got this idea from a friend and we were discussing back and forth. So my current disenchantment, although I'm still in love with stepping, I, you know, sometimes I don't like stepping, and this is why. For someone, I'm paying the mortgage on my house, okay? I invite Reggie Miles to my house. Reggie Miles come back to my house the second time. Not only does he make himself at home, but he starts to knock out walls. <laughs> he starts to redecorate. <laughs> he starts to change and rearrange the format of my home that I'm still paying the mortgage on. He ain't paid Nan mortgage, Nan <laughs> bill, or ain't paid Nan dues. To me, that's the equivalent of what I think and feel what is going on with the current status oh my God. of stepping. Oh my God. How can you whether you're from Chicago or otherwise, come into my home and take over what I know and love and, and I'm paying the bill on mm -hmm. and say now it's gonna be this way. That is totally disrespectful to the art form that has been paved before you, brother and sister, so again, I know I'm going to get some flat, but I'm speaking truth to power. Church, Man. there it is. Man, I'm like, I look at, I look at so many of the things that's, uh, that's going on. And uh, I just decided uh, to do what I wanted to do. I think from the words of uh, Maya Angelou, when we know better, we need to do better. We need to do better. That is the key. Phrase. Yeah. And the problem has been is that uh, all of the story or clarity in what has been the history hasn't been out there. When the first missionaries or the mm. first set of instructors or the mm. first people who went to take the dance outside of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, there Before were called stepping in the name of love. Let, let me make sure that that's clear. It yeah. didn't start with stepping in the name of no, love. No, I, no okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm not thinking, right. I'm not thinking about that. Those, the, right. the first instructors that came out, they came out really after the demise or the ending of the high stepper set because the high stepper set now to my understanding was the training ground right for for them okay so but when they went out as missionaries or yeah. as or as ambassadors or promoters of the dance no one ever took the history and culture one of the main one of the main instructors that I spoke to told me, he said, you don't need to know the history of the car to drive the car. That's what he told me, just straight up. He told me, you don't need to know the history of a car to learn how to drive the car. But how you? How do you know where you going, brother? How do you listen, know where you going, sister? I mean, but, but I listen, and, and I was with that because, but I know he, and then the next thing was that the people don't want to know where they've been. You know what, brother? Sometimes you don't know that you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> you did. Sometimes you just got to trust the doggone process. Woo. You did. Woo. I uh, listen, and that's what I was told. And then the third thing that I was told was uh, about 
People didn't desire. They did not desire to know to know how to walk. Because they and, ain't fell in love with the dance itself. At all. That's exactly right. And they then fall in love with it. So then I knew, I say, oh, this dance has fell up under the black market. And when the black market exists, there are no rules. You make the rules as you go along. When people start leaving Chicago, going to these other places, and if they had a partner with them and they started dancing and it was different from the local dance there, they became the king and queen. But that's a scapegoat. Right. That is a scapegoat. Classic scapegoat. But listen, and that's those are the kind of things that I was hearing and that I was saying. And the first thing I would say, man, I was telling the people, if you don't know, if you don't know all three, if you don't know the three, you can't be us. That was the first thing I said. Tell if you like can't pop, step and walk, you not us. There it is. You know, the dance, I don't know how the, I, I couldn't figure out how the evolution of the dance became one dimensional. I can't, I, I couldn't. Because I, I'm trying to tell you, Reggie, to, to, to understand it, it's all about revolution. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, the re, it's the revolutionary spirit of taking a dance and making it part of your city to best suit your oh, dance me. form and yeah, what you're you. comfortable with. I got you're you. taking it outside of Chicago and the rhythmic sounds and the musicality and instrumentation and love songs of Chicago as we know it. And you making it Dallas. You making it Florida. You making it Washington. You making it Memphis. As opposed to staying within the confines of and the parameters of Chicago style stepping. Because otherwise, don't call it Chicago stepping. That's right. Because you well, represent Chicago. Well, you know, now well, you know, one of the common one of the comments that I've always made is if you if you are an instructor and you're doing whatever you're doing, okay, I don't have anything against that. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. If you're teaching people to dance this particular way and they're coming in to pay you to dance this particular way, why don't you name it your name? Something else. Name Something it. Else. Yeah, call, if I was doing that, if I was in another town and then I'm teaching stepping, I should be calling it Reggie Miles. There Step. it is. Do not put the moniker of Chicago on it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Let me tell you something. When I go, in, when I'm in Chicago, I don't say, uh, yeah, let me get a Chicago hot dog. I say, give me a hot dog. <laughs> because it's Chicago. You did? It's Chicago. Yeah. I don't go around putting the moniker of Chicago when I'm in Chicago. So we have the luxury and the benefit in being in Chicago of just dancing. But when you start to venture outside of Chicago, you have to. It's mandatory if you're doing the dance correctly to call it Chicago style stepping. Man. Well, put another name on it, brother. Put another name on it, sister, because you ain't stepping. Because historically, now that's not that's really not a problem because there was the Alvin Ailey Dance Studios, right? There was the Arthur Murray dance studios right and then Catherine Dunham dance studios you had all these dance instructors out here so name your style that you're teaching after you and then, you know after you don't Preach call it. don't call it don't call it Chicago style don't call, don't call it Chicago stepping because if you're going to have Chicago on it then you need to be a part of the family and the there family is stay within the confines of what we know as bopping and walking. And yes. Stepping. Yes. 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 So, now, you know, what? So I want to say one more thing that has become problematic on the set before mm -hmm. we uh, close. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, there's a plethora of women versus men on the set. I can't really speak to Chicago because I'm not there anymore, but I know when I was there, it was still more women than men. 
But particularly and especially, and I speak for my wife in this, my mm. wife has had to learn to share her husband. Lord have mercy. Okay. In her patience and poise and dignity as my wife to have to share me to everyone outside of Chicago. Mm. The women, the women have become somewhat aggressive. That spirit of entitlement has wreaked havoc mm. on my marriage. Other people have spoken on it. So I'm speaking for myself, my wife, and others that are married or have significant others. Ladies, when I tell you that despite the spirit of entitlement, it's still a certain thing of respect that needs to happen as it pertains to this beautiful art form. When you ask me to dance, and I politely say no thank you, the attitude that I'm getting from a lot of women speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. So my statement to you that becomes so emotional and attitudish, if that's such a word, as it pertains to me saying no thank you is, if you want to dance that bad, my darling, you might want to consider bringing a partner. Mm. Getting some of these men involved, your husband, your son, your coworker, or whomever, you ain't got to force them to dance, but just introduce them to the dance. Mm. That will take a lot of pressure off the ratio that's already favoring the women versus the men. We are working like Hebrew slaves <laughs> trying to get through the dances, <laughs> sweating through our clothing, trying to get through these dances, not being able to get off the floor, trying to get through these dances, yet get a tap on the shoulder, get a pull of the belt loop, strategically getting bum rushed, if you will. So there is a pecking order sometimes. I want to dance with some of the people I want to dance with. So again, I know I'm going to catch some flack. I'm ready for the flack. I'm good with it. But I want to speak truth to power in this show called Conversations. Man, you, you've been doing it. And you've been doing it. And I let me just tease you with this. <laughs> oh! Come on with it, Reggie. <laughs> yes, sir. And I just looped that just to mess around with it, you know, because... Uh, Music for me and the set has always been dynamic. It's been a plethora. It, it's supposed to be, you know, uh, contemporary, classics, jazz, love song. That's Reggie, what, what is a classic? Uh, life, in is life in the country. Life in the country. Anything that was made in the 60s up to about, uh, I would say, when the, at the beginning of hip hop. So, you know, the people or the powers that be uh, in my generation and the generation that comes after me will say to you, Reggie or Rick or whomever has a, a, a rebuttal as it pertains to the classics or Dusties, they will say, well, we can't relate to that music. So then my rebuttal quickly is, so... If I was to take salsa, or if I was Come to on take now. another dance form. Come on now. But particularly salsa. Come I on now. I can't speak any Spanish whatsoever. Come on now. But if I was to take salsa, I'm becoming ingratiated into the culture. 
of salsa. Come on, now. and all that goes with it. I cannot dictate to the DJ or to that culture what I can relate to. Okay. <laughs> it's about the music and what has been set forth before you. Mm. You then, as a dancer, have to learn to adjust your palate, your taste buds may have to change to some degree to include the classics, bar none. That's it, that's all. It ain't what you do, it's how you do it. It's how you and, do it. And so it, uh, there has always been an element of contemporary music played with what we do. Some, song, some songs slip in there that's made today that are good. Yes, sir. They're really good and they can fit. But they listen, the Sam Chapman said 99% of all stepping music love. is about love and relationships. Love. Yes, is. sir. Yes, sir. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna be in too much agreement of dancing off of a song that calls a woman out of her name. There it is. Or refers to her not as a woman. There it is. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna enjoy that. You know, I'm not gonna enjoy that at all. Because I mean, you know, when I could do it, when I was out there doing it, right? When my younger days, I'm steady trying to say something in this in this girl's ear. Yeah, it was related to this song. I'm there trying. It I'm, is. I'm I'm trying to get her right there. It's you know? almost like foreplay, brother. You know it. You know it. Because Dan, and we've said this and we're going to say it again. We'll say it one more time. Dance is an unspoken language. It is. Once you set and you get in them lanes between this, with that sister, you are speaking to her with your movements. You're and just, Yes, right. And just like you're saying, you, you lay back and you're trying to mirror some of the things that you do. Because yes, when yes. she see when she sees that, then she's gonna respond to you in another way, That's and y'all right. gonna y'all gonna keep developing and overlapping, yes. and you know, y'all gonna keep going up, up, and yes. up in the dance. Listen, I there's a woman that I danced with 35 years ago. We didn't see each other for 25. <laughs> 25. <laughs> you know what I'm we didn't see each other. I'm married and this and that. But as soon as we got to dancing again, it wasn't two minutes before we went right back right where back. we were. There it is. Right back where we I were. Believe in that. Right I back where we were. And and the timing was there. And like some of the sisters now, and then the the uh the ladies that remember me when I was younger, right? And you know, they get mad at me, right? Well, when you gonna dance with me? I've been trying to dance with all these new ladies, not to not to rap or nothing like that, but I'm just trying to give them another side of the dance. There it is. That's all I'm trying to do, is give them another side of the dance. So some ladies will come out of from out of town and they'll come, I'm in town and I'm going out to walk. I'm going out to walk with them, but it, it all depends on what set. I'm going to because if I know certain DJ playing, I ain't and look, baby. I'm not gonna come there. Why don't you come here? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll see you here when I know at least I'm gonna get four, five walk songs. You know, yeah. six. You know, I'm not. I'm yeah. not going out anymore and staying no three hours at a set and, and hear four walk songs. Walk song. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that no more. I can't do That's that. Preposterous. Yeah, I can't do that no more. Mm -hmm. can't do that no more so and listen and, and i just think and i and i'm i just think and i know i got a lot of uh our uh my peers on here i mean all we really need all we really need is a place to have a set if we have a place to have a set and we could do it regularly yeah we can show how the set was and i'll give you a prime example that third friday set that liana had man so many people need to be exposed to that beautiful art form that came way before me that continues to be a beacon of beauty personified 
in motion. Man, my wife told me. She looked at Curly. This is Don Vic's older brother. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she said to him, you dance like Don Vic. Curly stepped back and said, huh, he danced like Vic me. Dance like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is this is this is a true story. Yeah. This, this was at least this was for me when I watch the people in Leanna set, man, it's like heaven on earth for me in the mm-hmm. dance world. It really truly is. That was a, that it's was... a small, intimate environment. Everybody is friendly, the camaraderie, the fellowship, the energy. The dance style, I mean, man, it's it. That was the first time I seen you on the floor in the wood, right? Uh, when you and uh, the phenom, Mr. Drew Alexander. Drew, that's my brother, younger brother. Yeah, and, uh, and y'all. he's one of the ones in New School that I omitted that uh, I apologize. He, Sean Bandy, Selwyn is coming, Selwyn Hodges is coming along. Mm-hmm, Those mm-hmm. brothers, yeah, they, they, they doing their thing, but. Mm-hmm. I still, you know, I, I have an old school spirit. So yes, I, I'm i more attracted and connected to Leanna's set and what that brings for my spirit. That feeds my spirit. Man, she, you boy. And I would come in when I was teaching at Howard, I would come in and she'd let me get in there and spend. You know, one time, you know, I call myself going to try to try to feed the try to feed some new schools with some music I played up. I did a, I did a loop, man. She she came up in that booth, man, put her hands on her hip. Yeah, she probably had a little attitude. She had and an attitude, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, big we time. We don't do that here. And yeah, and her eyes got big. She said, Reggie, <laughs> she said, I didn't bring you in here for that. Right, we don't do that up in here. And I can appreciate that because, you know, I'm gonna say this too, you know, um, it appears as if the DJs, and that's why I asked you about classics, the DJs are pulling from the same playlist as it pertains to classics. Listen, I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm getting ready to walk out and you can say goodbye to these people yourself. I ain't gonna <laughs> I'm gonna throw my hand at you. Listen, listen, it got so bad. Not one, let me take that back. Let me say this. Um I had heard about DJ, right, playing music. And uh, the routines were so, so were so, the, they were similar yes. that the waitresses working, walk, walking the floor could predict what the guys was going to play. There it is. I'm tired of listening to the same song by the Whispers, the same song by the Stylistics, the same <laughs> song by Maze and Luther and Freddie. Can we get some other damn, excuse my French, but can we get some other damn songs around here, man? Can we get some other songs, please? It's other, it's over 5,000 songs between the 60s and the 90s. But yet you want to say to me, well, this is the popular song. Oh, okay. We going with popularity. Okay, got that. But the monotony of it, it's draining. It's draining. The same 25 songs every set. I'm telling you, the monotony. I can't get into the set. Yeah. I yeah. can't get into my partner because I'm not really feeling the song because I've heard it a million and one times. Yeah, Leanna busted my chops, man. She took, you know, because uh, I call myself trying to fit in, get in and fit in with the rest of these cats. She looked at me, she said, oh, oh brother. No. no, be yeah, ready. She, she jumped ready. on me, man. She jumped yeah. on me. So, uh, you know, if it ain't, if, if the if the set is not there for me with my people, I don't want to play. Okay, I don't want to play. I'm not, you know, because I want, because I want to play, I want to play classics, you know, and I want to play some jazz. And I want to play some walk songs, you know. I want to play something missing by Bloodstone, you know. I want to play. I want to play "Make It Easy on Yourself" by Ron Banks, you know. I want to do yeah. some different types of things. Yeah. See, 
See, because listen, listen, the truth about Reggie Miles and as far as being a DJ is concerned, when I DJed, I danced at the same time. Did <laughs> you? Yes. Yes, that was my M.O., man. I would play records and <laughs> run back there and put on another song and come right back out there. At Chick Ricks, I did that. And at every set. And then it got so that women would just come and they would come up in front of me and say, you going to come down here and dance? And it was even so at this place, Heroes. They, the DJs, we were in a bird cage. I used to climb up there and climb down and come yeah. dance with a girl until I had my partner, my best friend. I had him sit up there and starting the song. Yeah, so, you know, I was jumping, going back and forth. But I was a, I was a working and a dancing DJ wow. at the same time. I did that, wow. man. So what you was no able to pull it off? I pulled it off for some years, man. I pulled it off. Yeah. So. It's serious. This set, the set is serious, and it's all about differences in music and stuff. But you know, well, the dance. Dallas Barnes said the seriousness of it is lacking. Mm. He did say that to me over the phone. He said, "Man, the seriousness of this dance. You know, I understand everybody wants to have fun, and I am in agreement with having fun. But you have to learn to earn." your spot and your place because it's a rite of passage man you know it's a rite of passage listen i don't know how in the world you're gonna come out to a set and not have fun i, I just listen if you go and i got the switch in my mind right that when i click it that has p-a-r-t-y <laughs> <laughs> Party! Yeah, you know, and, and when I, I got that flick, that switch, and when I click it, when I'm going out, I'm in that mode. I'm in that mode, and nothing is going to stop me from being that in that mode. And so there's a lot of things that when they talk about, well, I just come, I don't, I just want to have fun. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. People, I, I just, I, I'm just like, whoa, what are you talking about? There's so many women out here. I wish I was young. Okay. You know, cause hey, I would have a ball, man. There's so many, so many women out here. They and then the guys, and the guys is just making it so it's just wonderful for a man that can dance. The guys that just stay in that one box, yeah, stay in that man, one. Man, Reggie, the guys now because they know that it's so many more women. The ratio favors the men. They lazy. They doing the right, ebb and flow. Right. They doing the stroll. They don't want to put in the work, you know? So if you went to college and put in the work for your bachelor's, for your master's, for, to be published for your doctorate, and then somebody come behind you and do a quarter of the work, when you put in all the work, you'd be like, dude, you, Come on now. This not this not how that this ain't that. This not how that go. Mm. You got to put in the work. You got to do your due diligence in order to do this dance effectively with connecting with the art form, not the entertainment side because it, you are entertaining if you're doing it right. If you're doing it correctly, you are entertaining. But don't give me the ebb and flow of the stroll and everything is up top. And you hit my wife in the head. You hit mm. my friend, my female friends mm. in the head. You smacking a girl in the face. Mm. From, I mean, all moves and less movement. Because mm. this for me is about movement. Less about the moves, it's about the movement, brother. Because I walk differently than Reggie Miles walked to his car. Reggie Ma Miles walked differently from Calvin Barnes. Calvin Barnes walks differently from Daryl Davis. The movement is going to be different Man. for all men. And yeah, our moves may be the same, but the movement is different, brother. So it's it's like dance is like a language, right? <clears throat> it is. We all speak English here in this country. We speak we English, right? And there are different dialects. There is different dialects. The most impressive thing about me in regards to you when I saw you dance, and then we can just go ahead on and 
just close this thing out. <laughs> the most impressive thing that I saw about you is that I was able to identify your style. Thank and you. that's what earned that's what earned you respect from me. Thank you. Because I'm only respecting you when I see your style. Thank you. Chase, Chase Day said, it's so bad out here now. If it was 10,000 brothers at a set dancing, and if you cut all the heads off, you couldn't tell who was dancing. There it is. And I am in total 110% agreement with that statement. That statement is profound because I see it when I go across the country, just about everybody looks the same. Right. I don't know if it's the numbers. I don't know if it's the way they talk. I don't know if it's the lack of enthusiasm and desire for really learning and ingratiating themselves in the culture. Because for me, stepping is a lifestyle. Oh, it's man. not just a dance, brother. It's a lifestyle. It's the way I talk, the way I walk. The way I move, it's in my everyday life. We've had over 100 listeners <laughs> dealing with this simultaneously. And I want to say, bless your heart. And thank you in Jesus' name. Uh, we doing this. We've done this. I'm at, I'm at the... I'm at the end we because we can still just sit here and rap. So we're going to have to do this again. But God let me you. thank everybody who's been on this live tonight, this live conversation. Tal Rick, blessings to you, to your lovely wife. Thank, thank her you, and for allowing us to have this time. And so I'm done. Thank I'm you, done. Sir. Next thank week, it's Mr. Pete Frazier on conversations and if you'd like to be a part of conversations reach out to conversation reggie miles conversations at gmail.com you know i should have had somebody i was gonna give out the phone number and let somebody call but i'll get that next time because we got into this so i didn't yeah, maybe we i'm did. glad we did I'm a glad, good job i'm I glad we did yeah, yeah, I didn't I'm glad we didn't get in a conversation. I mean, let nobody call. Somebody somebody <laughs> might have set me off. And so well, thank you for the invite. I really truly appreciate. I love, honor, and respect everything that you do. And may God continue to bless us as a community Hallelujah. for the quest of knowledge and understanding of this beautiful art form that we all know. That's stepping. Amen. Man, there you have it, Rick. Thank you so much. Thank you back. And I'll call you back a little bit later. All right, we're gonna, sir. We're going to take care. We're going to take bless. it to the next level. All right, Peace sir. Peace out. Likewise. There you have it. There you have it. Conversations. This one was, I mean, I called myself just going to do a short one, but we just got down and did it. So thank you so much. Don't forget, this is available on YouTube. Like, share, and pass it on. Let everybody know because we just threw down. We just threw down. We just talked about it. And this is to clear, this is to, uh, to clear up a lot of things. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey Shine. Don, thank you so much. Cheryl, thank you so much. Uh, Great show. Thank you, Don. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you so much. And to uh, Sophia, thank you so much. Everybody chiming in. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Uh, Miss Poe, thank you so much. All of you all have been great. Great. I forgot to turn off my, my bot, man, <laughs> for my gospel show. I got a gospel show in the morning starting at 6 o'clock on Twitch. Oh, boy. It's, it's just been wonderful. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Denise. Uh, and this is just conversation. So I'm going to get out of here because I got to go get my daughter. This is the world's largest stepping contest week here in Chicago. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to be there. I'm going out. So we got a whole lot of things to do. Thank you all so much. Take care and don't forget to join me for the next conversation.